Good morning. We'll be talking about the project application autoscaler, which is a production-ready cloud-native uh, service to autoscale your application. It, did you ever heard of application autoscaler project, anybody? Yes, you are using application autoscaler? OK. So maybe you will get in-depth uh, knowledge of how to use and how to deploy kind of thing. OK. So autoscaler, application autoscaler project is a uh, cloud foundry incubator project. It is a collaborative project. Uh, earlier started with Fujitsu, SAP, and IBM. After Fujitsu exits, it, it's uh, being managed uh, by IBM and SAP. Uh, so we have uh, multiple developers from both SAP side and IBM. I'm Tanmay. I'm Tanmay Pal from SAP. And I have with me Rohit from SAP and Ingli from IBM China. Uh, from the project perspective, we have three different repositories. Uh, one is for the core project, which is App Autoscaler. As Autoscaler is deployed as a boss release, so we have a different repository for this. And also we have a CLI plugin to actually handle uh, different Autoscaler operations. So we have a uh, different repository for that. And if you want to contact with us, we can just, uh, uh, just post a message on our Slack channel, or you can drop a mail in the CF dev list. We have... Uh, Few more sessions, so we'll try to actually uh, clarify all your queries here itself after the session. But yeah, we have a project office hour from uh, 210 to 240 uh, in the, at the runner cycle, the foundry. You can come and we can just clarify your queries. Also, we have another session called Autoscaler Bring Your Own Matrix, which is advanced versions of the Autoscaler session uh, from 3.30 to, uh, to 4, 4 at Singapore. So you can just come. Uh, maybe if you are interested. What will be our agenda? Uh, we'll be trying to give you an idea of how to consume autoscaler service. So if from a developer perspective, how, how you can use autoscaler service to scale up or down your application, as well as if you want to deploy autoscaler service to provide the capability of autoscaling on your cloud platform, we, you can just get some idea here. We'll have a small cool demo and future roadmap. With this, I will hand over uh, this to Rohit for uh, further details on how to how you can consume autoscaler application. Thank you. Hello, hi. So, yeah. So as you can see, you can scale an application on Cloud Foundry with or without autoscaler. So why use autoscaler? Even with autoscaler, you need to understand your application's uses pattern, because every application is a different application. So you need to know how much your users are, how many requests you are getting. Those details you need to know. So you need to do some performance analytics on your application. Then only you can use autoscaler. Now, what benefits comes with autoscaler? Without autoscaler, you'll have to monitor your application Whenever certain instance occurs, let's say the throughput is too high for your application instance, application instances to take, then you'll have to manually scale it up. And whenever it is too low, you have to save money, cost, and infra. So you scale it down manually. And again, you have to keep monitoring. With autoscaler, you can tell all this in a simple policy and rest. Autoscaler will do the job of monitoring and apply, scaling it up and down whenever, when and as it's needed. So let's see what the policy is. So autoscaler policy has two types of two types of rules. The first one is dynamic rules, and dynamic rules supports standard metrics, which are memory used, which is memory consumed by the application instance in megabytes, memory util which is again memory consumed by the application instances, but it's in percentage. Next is response time. Now this is in milliseconds, how, uh, how long your application container takes. And the last one is throughput. It's in response per second. So responses per second. So you can use this. Apart from this, you can also use custom metrics. So whatever your application has sometimes uh, some certain metrics you want to use to scale your application up, or down. Now, I'll not talk much about custom metrics since we already have a dedicated session to it, so you can attend that. And autoscaler monitor your applications instance-wise. All the instance metrics gets collected by autoscaler. Then it aggregates those metrics 
and the scaling will only happen when your aggregated matrix is above certain threshold or below certain threshold. So let's see how we define it. So on the right hand side, you can see we have something called in the top instance min count and instance max count. So you always tell Autoscaler how many minimum instances you want running and how many maximum instances you want running. Between these only, Autoscaler will move it up or down. It will not go beyond this, so you will not have your billing shock. So then comes the scaling rules. So scaling rules is for the dynamic. And you can see it's an array, so you can provide multiple scaling rules. The first one we can see, so uh, there's a metric type. So you tell what type of metric you want to monitor. Here, the example says throughput. You can have response time as well, memory use, or if you choose any other name from these four, that will be considered a custom metric. And then the operators. So you tell how it is above the certain threshold or below certain threshold, that for that, you need to tell which operator. It can be greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to. Then there's threshold. So this is the number where you define what is the threshold. So 500 MBs, then you write 500, or 50%, then you write 50 over here. The next is adjustment parameter. So what happens when the memory, your application, let's say, crossed 500 MBs, what do you want to happen? So here we say plus 100%. You have 10 instances running. You said plus 100%. Autoscaler will see at that time, it will make it 20 instances. If you have 20 instances running, it will make it 40 instances. You can also use absolute numbers. So let's say plus 5. So if you have 20 instances running, and that event occurs, Autoscaler will only do plus 5. Then you will have 25 instances running. So you have two choices over there. Now you are seeing there are two more parameters. Those are highlighted. So these are optional parameters, which allows you more control over application autoscaler policy and how you want your application to be scaled. So the first is bridge down, bridge duration second. Now what is bridge duration second? So your application's aggregated memory or metric can be above certain threshold for a minute time very ignorable time, but Autoscaler will not consider that. So what Autoscaler tells you, you can define a certain time period through which your application's aggregated memory has to be higher or less than lower. So it has to be during that time. So the bridge duration here, it's 60 seconds. Depending on your application, you can have it 300 seconds, 400 seconds. It's up to you, but the minimum is 60 seconds. The next is cool down seconds. Now, what is the cooldown second is very important since every application is a different application. So a Java application will take more time to start up than a Node application. A Node application starts in a few seconds, whereas a Java application can take a couple minutes. So Autoscaler will start your new instances, but that new instances will take some time to normalize your aggregated metrics. So you might want to have a cooldown period during that period, even when the threshold is higher, then, the, uh, uh, then defined in the policy, autoscaler will not scale. Autoscaler will wait to take your, uh, to, to, it will take consideration your cooldown period and wait for your metrics to get normalized, and then again it will start scaling. So next, you have this is the second time of second types of rule which is schedules. So as with applications, you can have certain situations, let's say your finance application, which at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month might have heavy uses, but throughout the rest of the month, it will be more or less idle. So you might want to override the global instance min count and max count. And so you can do that by using schedules. Now schedules, uh, since it's scheduled, you need to have a time zone. So you define a time zone. And then schedules are of two types, recurring schedules and specific date schedules. So recurring schedules, as the name says, it can be repeated over weeks or months. So here you can see in the example, days of week, it says. You can have days of months as well. And for recurring schedule, you tell start time and end time and which days of the week or days of month you want it to be executed. 
and then you tell instant min count and instance max count. Now this, this instance min count and instance max count will override your global instance min count and instance max count. So let's say your application was generally defined scale, scaling 5 to 10. It was moving using dynamic scaling rule between 5 to 10. But during the schedule, you can have the schedule for, let's say, 50 to 100. And at the end of the month, it will be moving between 50 and 100 because your application uses is very high during that time. So you can do that. And then in the last, you can see initial instance min count. Now this is very important. Let's say before the schedule started, you had 10 instances running, and the schedule says 50 to 100. So it should directly go there. But so at that time, you can tell initial instance min count is 60. So auto scaler will make sure that when the schedule starts, you have 60 instances running, and it will let then dynamic scaling rules take care and let it be move between 50 and 100. So, and there's another situation. So you can have 120 instances running, and initial instance min count 60. Since you have 120 instances running, it is, uh, and you are using auto scaler, so it is assumed that you might have a heavy load at that time. So auto scaler will not scale it down to 60. In the minimum, in the other scenario, it will do. But when it is higher, it will not do that. So uh, next is how, to, how you can operate autoscaler with CLI. I'll let Ying take over. Hello? Yeah. Is it OK? OK. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So just as Rohi explained, the scaling policy is essential for all scaler. So after you create a scaling policy, you must attach the policy to your application. Yeah, otherwise, it won't, all scaler won't start to work for you. Um, that is very important. Yeah, if you have multiple applications and want, you want to attach and you want to share the same policy, then you must attach the policy to the different applications separately. It's very important that when you are doing a blue-green deployment, when you, if you have a scaling policy defined on the blue one, when you roll out to the green application, you must attach the policy to the green application since the blue and green are different. Yeah, so let's talk about how to attach the policy to the applications. If the all scaler is offered as a service in the marketplace, it's offered as a service in your platform, then the most simplest way to attach the policy is to through the self bound service command. And then you can apply the policy file as an additional parameter with slash C and attach the policy JSON file. And also, if you want to have more advanced operation with App Scaler, you can install the App Scaler plugin uh, from the plugin repo, from the community plugin repo. And then you need to define the API endpoint of the Scaler server. And then you can play with attach policy, detach policy, uh, and then re retrieval the policy metrics and history. We will have a demo for that later. OK, just now we introduced how to use AllScaler from the end user point of view. Now let's first do a little deep dive. Uh, that is the architecture diagram for the AllScaler backend. All the things in this box uh, belongs to the Apple AllScaler backend. It has a service broker, which is compliant with the open service bro broker uh, APIs so that you, you can create a service instance and bind the service instance to your application with the policy. And also, it has an API endpoint uh, to respond to the CURD uh, request uh, from, register from the UI dashboard or the CLI. Uh, it has a metric forwarder and which is used to accept the custom metrics reported from your application. Uh, and then it will forward the metrics to the log aggregator. Then the metric collector component will get, will fetch this uh, custom metrics and standard metrics from log aggregator and do aggregation and trigger scaling action. Uh, all this stuff is support HA deployment. You can deploy multiple instances of these ones. Uh, most of them is working in the active active approach, and uh, only a few. For example, the operator that is a housekeeping component is working as a master slave. Okay. 
just now we talk about to alpha or scale. Yeah, sorry. In fact, uh, just now I mentioned what scale could be offered as a service uh, in the self marketplace. But in fact, currently we support two offering approach. The first one is offer it as a service. Then for the provider. Uh, you need to deploy you deploy the Oscala Bosch release with the default template, nothing to change. Then for the end user, they need to create a service instance or Oscala and then ban the service with policy. Uh, and also, anyway, they can still use the CLI. Yeah, when it is offered as a service, we will ensure it works, looks like a service. That means you can only attach the policy after the service binding is created. And when you unbind the service, the policy is deleted. Or the policy lifecycle is limited within the service lifecycle. And in another way, we can offer Oscalar as a building application experience. That means for the end user, they, once they push an application, they can use the Oscalar CLI to attach the policy directly without creating service instance or unbind service. Uh, to yeah, if you want to up, if you want to provide the Oscalar capability as a building experience to end user, then during the deployment, you need to change the variable service offering enabled uh, from true to false to disable the service offering approach. Okay. Uh, Apple Scalar has a both release to deploy it. Yeah, but anyway, first of all, you need to have a Cloud Foundry deployment first, and then add Oscalar. Uh, above of it. Uh, we have some dif uh, different deployment uh, options. Just now we talk about how to enable the building experience. Uh, and along with the latest CF deployment, uh, we also have some additional ops file to enable the Bosch DNS. Um, and uh, anyway, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this stuff is still in development. Currently, we offer it as an ops file. But given the latest CF deployment is completely removed the console related things. Uh, we are also deployed a new one to make the Bosch DNS enabled uh, by default. So yeah, if you need to deploy the Bosch release, please refer to the latest gate document to have the most latest one. And, uh, uh, and also along with the FISO approach, uh, you can con you can continualize all the all together Bosch release uh, to launch it to deploy it on the Kubernetes. Uh, in the, uh, we already have, uh, in fact, we already contribute, we already um, pull request our latest uh, final release to the SUSE ICF repo. So if you install uh, ICF from the SUSE repo, you can get Apple Scaler installed by default. And also on the IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise environment, you know, I know most of you maybe learn it from the keynote from Timey yesterday morning. Uh, on that environment, yeah, in, in later this year, we will offer Oscale as a, um, a, as a building experience on that environment. So uh, let's have a try. We can have a demo on the CV environment. First of all, this is a CFE environment. I deploy, sorry, I make it. Sorry, let me make it. Hmm. This is a CFE environment I deployed in, yeah, it is not the final release version. Uh, it already ran for a few days so that I, I make sure it is a stable version to run, launch the demo. Uh, anyway, I hope it won't broke. Uh, here we deploy all the Cloud Foundry components as a, as a port on Kubernetes and also with the all scalar component. Uh, yeah, you can see we only launched three ports here. In fact, we, uh, we put the API server service broker inside the all scalar API port and we put the metric collection and event generator into the metrics port and the scaling engine, scheduler, uh, and all the other stuff into the actor port. Uh, so they, it is a compact installation. Okay. And 
Now, here in my in my self command line, I didn't install self. It installed the self uh, off scale plugin. Let me install it. And after that, you will see more comment or uh, more command available here. And currently, I already launched in the CV environment. And just before the just before the session, I already pushed uh, a demo application. It is a simple Node.js application. It didn't do much more things. I just want to, yeah, it is that. I just want to try out the throughput policy and to add workload to it to trigger the scale out and scale in. Okay, that is the app. So now, let's just see whether Yeah, in fact, I didn't attach any policy to the application or now, so you will get an error since there is no policy defined. And I will try to attach a policy for that. Okay, let's just retrieve the policy again. Okay, here is the policy. I, I, I define a throughput as a metric type, and I limit the upper threshold as 20, since one running the load test, I didn't want to make my mic crazy. So it, with, a lower, uh, with this uh, with 20 threshold, it's easier, to, it's easier to be scaled out. And then scale in, when it's less than 10, it will be scale in. I also have a schedule here, but uh, anyway, it, maybe it's not, it won't be triggered to the, to the now. Now, I will add a workload. Uh, I, will, I would like to add workload with the AB test two. It will driven 50,000 requests uh, in total and with uh, 16 concurrent users to the application. And it will take a little time to run the load test and to trigger the scale out. And in the meantime, I would like to uh, ask Rohi again to introduce the all scale offering on the SAP. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So we have auto. Hello. Yeah. So we have auto scaler running on SAP Cloud Platform for uh, over a half year now. And it auto, we went GA with Autoscaler last year during FCOM in December 2017. And as with all things SAP Cloud Platform, Autoscaler is also available on all, all different ESs, AWS, Azure, OpenStack, and GCP. Uh, there's also dashboard support for Autoscaler. And by the end of this month, there will be custom metric support for Autoscaler on SAP Cloud Platform. So you can try that. Yeah. Oh, it's still working. It's still. Yeah, we can switch to another window. Uh, uh, is that too small? Sorry. I can make it larger. Also scaling metrics. Sorry. Not policy. Oh, it's too long. Tapping again. CF WP throughput. And let's just see how many metrics is already collected. Yeah, it already collected uh, some of the metrics. And let's just see. History. I guess it's not. It's, it's not enough time. It didn't have enough time to scale out yet. Oh, perfect. It already scaled out from one to two. Yeah, since I defined to adjust the, to scale out to the double size of its original, uh, currently it's scaled out from one to two, and with the action at 100% instance about the original, according to the threshold, is upper is exceeds the upper threshold. And, okay, the load test is done. Uh, let's see. But maybe the 
yeah, since we are, we are doing scaling space on the aggregation matrix, so the aggregation matrix will be scaled, uh, will be decreased in a more graceful way. So it will may take, uh, uh, it will may take uh, a few minutes, uh, a few uh, longer time to scale in, but uh, it will really, it will help to your application, to make your application stable. Okay, but anyway, we have another existing application so that I can show what happens on this existing application with a schedule defined. Okay, here you can see how many, okay. Here it try to scale out from one to 20 when a schedule is triggered to fulfill the mi minimum instance account. And then it's scale in, since there is no workload, scale in, scale in, scale in, scale out, until it reaches the minimum lim limit one. Okay, that's all for the demo. And let's talk about how to, uh, also find the camera side. And let's talk about the roadmap. Um, in the in the future, in the later in the later months, uh, we will add the community version of the UI dashboard support for all together. Uh, you may already um, you may have a look on, on this nice chart. This is a metric chart for the all together. So uh, we will add the uh, contribute this code to the community so that you have a community version of the Oscillar UI dashboard. And also currently we are collecting metrics from log aggregator with the V1 API and we will uh, switch it to the V2 API to align with the latest stress. Uh, and also we are considering to add a single deployment to support the Oscale for multiple cloud foundry environment. Yeah, that is used for if you have, as a service provider, if you have multiple service cloud foundry instance and you don't, and you don't, and you don't want to install up or scaler in each of them. So you can have a single site of or scaler uh, deployment and then to uh, scale different applications within the multiple cloud foundry. Yeah, that's all for the roadmap. Yeah, any question? Okay. Very much. We'll take some questions because this is uh, lunchtime, I guess. But we should be able to do a few questions. Anybody for the team? Short question. Um, um, you have also further boundary conditions, for example, the amount of uh, Diego cells. For example, if you have a landscape with only 20 Diego cells um, uh, and you scale up, um, do you also take that, uh, the amount of memory and um, storage, uh, storage that is important, uh, memory and CPU from, from uh, the Diego cells uh, into account? Or? No, it's not considered. Uh, so it is. You can only scale as much as your space or or quota is. So, but it's, it's distributed over the size. Yeah. Zone, yeah. So you need to have. You need to make sure the quota you are getting from your account have sufficient memory, like is providing you, and the rest is the CF deployment play. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you exceed the memory quota, uh, you will get a failed message when you retrieve the scaling mm -hmm. history. So where you see the scaling history, there you will see failed because not enough quota in your org or space. Mm -hmm. One more question. Anybody? No? Well, thank you, and I guess uh, good check it out, right? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.